good morning. Um, thanks for coming on this um, you know, Sunday morning. Uh, I want to thank Helen Briasulis for letting me give this presentation today. Um, after now, I think it was a very good conference with very, very good ideas. And we have to thank, I have to thank the organizing committee for doing an excellent job on that. Right, my name is Stanis Garagunis. I'm a geographer. Um, I was in this department and um, I'm now very interested in not um, generally the assembly theory, but some of the theorists that had used somehow what is being called assembly theory. My presentation is a part of a paper uh, that I wrote on these three uh, theories. Uh, but I think the, um, the purpose of this presentation today, it might be more interesting uh, if, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't present the paper, but part of that, and this is what I did, and this is what I'm going to do, and I just, I'm going to focus on uh, two issues um, that are actually uh, being discussed by these theorists, and uh, maybe uh, not directly. Uh, these two issues are politics and ethics. And I would like to see, and what we'll be discussed later, if there is something from assembly theory that it can be used in order to rethink uh, politics and ethics. Right? So I'll start. Uh, Introduction, we've done it, we have read it, we discussed it here in the conference. What is the importance? For me, in a sentence theory, you find a theory of difference. And we will see why a theory of difference is important. We all know in continental philosophy today that uh, difference is a major issue. We know all this postmodernism, poststructuralism. Difference is a huge part, right? Uh, a very rhetorical question that Thor asks himself in one of his books. He wants to answer that. Where to start? But his answer is in the middle of things, and what can I do? Where the assembled theory, let us take a bit from the last, unfold. The issue is to unfold. Of course, unfold is not something stationary, right? It's a process where you have to fold, unfold, and refold again. Um, a question about what kind of theory is assembled theory? Is it an ide idealistic one, or is it an empiricist theory? Uh, it can be neither, it can be both. Both plus and, this is something that the guy uses in order, to, um, in order to describe a process where you postpone and procrastinate something uh, but you leave the options and the opportunity and the finale open, right? So it can be both and. It's perfectly materialist but it's not dialectical in any kind of Marxist sense if we all agree what Marx said about dialectics, which again I don't think uh, all people will agree what he said about that, if he said something here. But not idealistic in the classical Kantian sense of his uh, critiques on ethics. It can be thought, however, in terms of an actor network, right? So, um, in actor network from Latour, uh, major thing and epistemology, flat ontology, but from that particular thing I would like to take from Latour his principle on uncertainty, right? Insecurity, uncertainty. This is something that Latour implicitly tells, right? Uh, the variety of rules uh, that for Latour are important if we want to appreciate what insanity is. First rule is uh, follow rather than explain, right? Explanation is something sociological, right? So we have to follow his suggestion. Um, there's no a standard group, it's everything under the process of being formed. So, only group formation, I think uh, all these things, they make sense that they have discussed. The third group, action of the taking, uh, in after that work, you're not 100% conscious of what is happening, right? Uh, maybe in things that you think that you're sure about, maybe something else has intervened and has changed something that you otherwise take as granted or you consider as being uh, totally decided, fully consciously by you. The fourth rule, objects, they can act to the non-human, human interaction. The difference between what is a fact and what is an issue of interest, and then we have to see, they don't deny, Latour doesn't really deny that there is a reality out there, he simply says that, you know, to that, the fact we have also to add a matter of concern. And the final thing, the final rule of actor network, writing. Writing is a different thing. It doesn't have to do with research, it doesn't have to do with reading, it doesn't have to do with study. Writing is a whole new process uh, that changes something from the very beginning. Maybe something that you have thought is different in the way you think of that, 
and at the first when you try to write it. Is there a difference between actor network and assemblance theory? Is there a difference between Latour and the left? If we take these uh, theories as representatives of their epistemologies? Well, from the left, the famous bodies without organs, the emphasis here is placed upon becoming rather than being something uh, that, you know, most uh, the less readers they do know. Becoming is relevant to association, so this is taking us back to Latour's actor network. Uh, being is about a point, uh, but for the less, uh, the coming is pointless. So the less grows with the coming rather than being. Uh, the coming, however, it doesn't mean uh, a priority between the original and what comes after that. But the coming is not imitation. Uh, is there a better term for describing uh, his uh, the lizard becoming? What constant transformation? Again, on a more conceptual basis, these kind of theories. Uh, is there any materialism in that? Uh, all the theoretical stuff that you can find uh, in his books, they fall down for and we fall. But the, the two points that I'm going to discuss, politics uh, and difference, which I think are important in these theories. Politics, what kind of politics the assembly theory can actually help us uh, start, not apply, but at least start thinking. Uh, Micropolitics of difference, uh, it has been discussed in the past, I think assemblage, it can help us think about micropolitics of difference. What do we know about difference? Difference is made of other differences. There's nothing other than different, right? Different starts from different. Assemblage thinking from politics and places. Now you have to move to the ter terrain of ethics, right? Uh, terrain of ethics. What is the right thing to do? What is the good thing to do? Promote, sustain, and cultivate moralities that would respect differences. There is a big difference, and at the end of this uh, short presentation, I think it would be clear. What's the difference between morality and ethics, right? It is a difference, but I think it helps understanding what assembly thinking is about. Um, AT is not about the use of politics there, and it's not about the use of ethics, right? It can help us to move from politics to micro-politics, and from ethics to liquid morality. This is the point that we can discuss now. From ethics to moral ambivalence. What is the meaning of ambivalence. It's something that is not clearly defined, but it's something that I have in my mind. I always think about, is it the right thing to do? The thing is, when uh, on the terrain of ethics, uh, there is a kind of prescription. This is good, you do that, and you know, you can go, uh, and you better have some, you know, very quiet sleep. When it comes to moral ambivalence, that's not the case. When you go uh, into bed to sleep at night, moral ambivalent <coughs> person, the person asks himself, have I been good enough today? And there is no secure answer for that, right? And the same applies for all the other institutions if you try to use ambivalence in that particular case. Ethical judgments, they have to be questioned. Political alliances, we don't really know what the left and the right represent today. I mean, what is actually happening? Nobody knows, so there's no secure ground for that. Personal engagements, that's a huge issue. We know the personal thing is ambivalent. But again, there have been some sort of, you know, um, reconsideration of what is the meaning of being moral on a personal level. Economic institution, financial crisis today, there's nothing more to say about that. Everybody understands what's the meaning of insecurity in the economy. Scientific progress, a lot of question and discussion about here, not only about how science progresses, but also is that a really scientific new discovery here? And about art, well, you know, questions are huge here. What is real art? So, I'm trying to say that in ambivalent uh, state of mind when it comes to politics and ethics, AT theory it has something to say. This thing that in a society with no foundation, meanings contested all the time, right of interpretation, of course, is not something new. Language games, it comes from the uh, Viking science philosophy. Neoliberal capitalism is actually science helping. Um, you know, those who are actually in need of it, helping the new liberal capitalist institution today. Harvey was here, it's absolutely on the positive. Uh, capitalism, science serves today's capitalism. <coughs> art, you know, we all have questions. Is that real art? In terms of love, in terms of personal feelings, sometimes, exceptionally, it can be true. But is it? Most of the time, it's given in exchange. Money, usually, but, you know, uh, depends on the personal experience. So, what do we do? What is the thing? My answer in, you know, moving from AT theory to that French theory, Salem, but you, 
uh, French philosopher, mathematician, uh, a Marxist, um, he introduces back again ontology, which I think is quite important for AP theory, and truth. Uh, it's an important thing, truth. Is that the question for my presentation, it should be by now. Is there any possible way to try to, you know, um, slow down the, that state of uh, differentia differential affairs that have, uh, you know, dominated all our personal economic institutions, all the ethical uh, understandings, liquidity, determination, contingency, and from A T again, the externality of relations, right? The thing that, you know, uh, persons are uh, somehow not determined but conditioned by the rules. The answer is no, but this isn't necessarily good news. Why? Well, if you go back to the truth of relations, you'll see what is the truth. You have to define the Jew says that truth as the new that happens under the responsibility of the event to which uh, a subject it needs to declare its fidelity. That goes by the name of the event, right? So, I don't want to go into the Jewish philosophy. That philosophical, that conceptual development of the view has been followed by very serious, very deep mathematics, set theory, uh, and a lot of uh, very complex mathematical formulas. But some, somehow, he manages to bring together uh, mathematics, uh, continental philosophy, and his uh, ontology of truth that goes through all these uh, uh, various domains. And um, just to skip in this range, what is the outcome of that important? Uh, that philosophy uh, is actually thinking about the truth that it can offer to science, love, uh, politics, and art, but it cannot, a philosopher, it cannot represent a thing uh, in the place or in the shoes of an artist, of a politician of a scientist or of a person who is in a personal engagement. So responsibility is taken out from the philosophical and it goes back to the uh, ontology of truth. So this is how I kind of thought of um, IT in philosophical terms. That would be all. Thank you. Yeah.